Hi, I'm Miriam Joy and welcome to my studio. I'm going to show you how to make our skeleton bottle here. This is a fun Halloween bottle. We'll kind of talk about other ways to make them as well, but I think you'll have lots of fun and hopefully you'll have it for many Halloweens. I'm going to be using ultra matte gel or gel medium to do our bottle and I want one that is um, very thick almost to the end thick here I used matte it wouldn't matter if matte or gloss that's up to you but one that is opaque you don't want it transparent and um, so you want one like that and I did pick mine up at Michael's in their paint section so you can look for that there and what we're going to do on this skeleton we're going to use a flat bottle because he doesn't curve or bend with uh, the other part so we want to make sure that we use a flat bottle and on this bottle this was an olive oil bottle now the next one I found was not quite as big as the other one and it has the M's and there's a couple of things that we could do with that the skeletons usually come in a dollar bag if you go to the dollar stores if not they do carry them like at Walmart in a bag of all the little critters but sometimes they have spooks in them so you could cover the M with the spooks if you wanted to but since my initials are M I might leave it I might try to get it thick enough that I can cover that up as well we'll play with that now another obstacle that I'm running into is this isn't as big as my skeleton so this guy I'm only going to take him to probably about the knees and cut him off so if you have to do that that's okay just make him to fit you might use those little legs somewhere else so we've got him kind of ready another thing I did was I'm going to keep my lid but I want to remove that piece so I'm going to do my lid as well and because this guy is shorter and I really like the look of them, we're also going to be doing our candle stand, which you can pick up at the dollar stores, and they usually have those as a regular item. So we'll be doing it as well. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to take our gel, and I like to just use it with my finger. That is totally up to you. And I'm going to be doing half, about half of the bottle. Now you want this on pretty thick, but what I like about the medium is you get this kind of spider web effect. And I've been playing with some different textures and they're too stiff. They don't work well for this. I get these peaks instead so I don't suggest that you use those and I'm probably not going to do the bottom of the bottle we'll take a look at it and see here see that's covering up pretty good on that M you could even do all three sides dry it and then do the back side that's totally up to you I'm going to do most of the sides but just kind of get that kind of spider web looking you can see that we have it pretty thick and make sure you do up the neck of the bottle as well when you spread it around with your finger like that just make sure that you don't make that too thin you really shouldn't be able to see through it. There is another bottle that I'm doing this year, and that one is going to be see-through. And when we're getting to this part here, we're going to go ahead and put our guy on and it really doesn't matter too much what color he is because 
we're going to cover him up later but you want to stick him down enough that he's going to stay but you don't want to apply the gel on top of him because otherwise you're going to lose his shape now I don't want to go I'm gonna go ahead and screw this lid back on because I have no intentions of taking it off later and we'll put a design on the lid as well when we get there and I usually let mine, I work on it at night and just let it dry overnight and then do the second layer the next day. It does take quite a while to dry. It's going to depend your humidity, hot or cold, and how thick you made it. So all of those things do apply. And we'll do the top of the lid when we do our second, or we might even leave that till later. We'll take a look at him. lid him a little bit but he's still okay you want to have those arms down and him in there as much as you can now if you were going to do another item like the spiders you'd only want the body in there you wouldn't want that part sticking out so you can do something like that with the spook part that we talked about if you only had round bottles this guy only worked because this bottle was so big and it was really hard to do. I probably wouldn't do that again. But like a snake where he would kind of fit. Or I did bugs, a centipede, and I left like this guy's feelers out. You can do all kinds of different little spooky things if you want to. That's totally up to you. And on this one I put a cork in the top of him because I didn't have a lid. So... We're going to go ahead and let this guy dry, and then we're going to come back and do the back of him. Another thing we can do while we're waiting for the first part to dry is go ahead and do our candle holder. Now, we're not going to do this layer here where it touches the bottle or it touches the bottom, but you want to do all of the sides and everything in between. So I'm going to go ahead and do this guy all the way around. I'm going to wipe anywhere where he would glue to the glass. As long as it's not a big part, it's okay. It's not a big deal. Remember, we want to keep these as much as we can poking out. You don't want them to lay flat. The more we can get them up, the better. And go ahead and do that guy all the way around while we're waiting for everything to dry. All right, this side is all dry, and so is our base. So we're going to go ahead and do the other side. You could even put one of these on each side if you wanted to. I'm going to do it two-sided. And I'm also going to finish up the top. And I'm just going to do the top a little bit. I don't want the top sticking up a lot because we're going to glue little crossbones and skull on there. We'll talk about that when we get to there and then we'll just go ahead finish up that bottle. You're not going to see through it anyway. So we're going to do this exactly as I did the other side and then once it's dry we're going to start painting it. Now that your texture paint is dry, we're going to go ahead and just cover it with acrylic paint. And on my first bottle, I used black, but on this one, just to be different, I'm going to use purple. And you can do whatever color you want to. And we're just going to cover it. You want to get in all those little crevices where there's white and just do that really really well cover the whole bottle and the stand if you made one and the lid all really really well I think because this is white texture paint you should probably only need one coat so if you need to go ahead and do two and then we're also going to cover our little skeleton guys as well really well 
And depending on what color they are, you may need a second coat on them. Remember, we're going to add one more color to bring them forward. So that's going to be up to you. That's enough. I'm not going to cover him any darker than that black right there. But your skeleton may have been purple or pink or green or something. You may need one more coat. So go ahead and get that done. And then once that is dry, we are going to uh, put our details on him. Now that our bottle is all dry, we're going to talk about a couple of things. If you didn't have a lid on it, you could put a um, cork in it, but the little um, crossbones on them, sometimes you can find them in the scrapbook section. Tim Holtz has some really cute ones. But we have a mold in Miriam Joy now, and I just made several of these up with the quick wood, and I just did the silver with the Inca Gold, and we'll talk about that in a second, and just glue those on top. I just had a bunch so I could put them on any of my projects at Halloween time, and how cool that really looked, and I would just glue that on with E6000. But to do the highlights, I'm going to use Viva's Inca Gold, and I have found this in the scrapbook section. I've only found it at Joann's. And um, you can also look online, Google it if you need to, to see where you could buy that. I've also bought it off of eBay and different things like that. I really, really, really like these. One thing I'm going to tell you is just use them as highlights in light coats. Don't use them to base coat in. They peel off if you do that because they weren't made to go on in heavy layers. And um, I put a little... Um, wet napkin or what are the little baby wipes a wet piece in there to help keep them wet and so they don't dry out keep the lids on them as much as possible when you're working with them especially if you have a fan or anything going on now if you can see there's a couple of little white spots that I should have gotten so make sure like those you kind of check before you kind of go to the next step to make sure you've got it really covered with your purple really well but what we're going to do now is just just take our purple and just rub it really lightly and it's going to pick up all that spider web kind of looking stuff and make it kind of spooky looking and it's easier to do a little bit and add more later the color I am using is just this silver right now and even up on the rim a little bit where we even put those spider webs. See how cool that turned out. And if it gets in between, that's okay, but you're basically going after the spider webs. And that's why you're using your fingers because it's wider and you're not painting it on with a paintbrush so it gets everything. You're just picking up those highlights. You might want to use like the yellow green or green yellow. That might be something with the purple. There's all kinds of different colors that you can use. Now the skeletons, I'm going to do them a little bit different color so that they show up a little bit different here. But isn't that awesome? I just love working with that. I think that is so cool. And if you need a little to get in between all of these, you can do with a little Q-tip to get some colors in between if you need to around your skeleton, whatever you kind of need there. Now, to bring the skeleton out, use my wet wipes here. I'm going to use an orange, and my orange is called orange. Well, imagine that. And you could do him silver. There's even a black, and the black is kind of a uh, hematite. I know I'm going to get probably corrected on that. Play with that and see if you like that better than the orange. I just think the orange is going to show up better than that. But don't be afraid to play with it. There's also some purple colors and, and different things like that. So here we go. Oh yeah, see how much he shows up. 
and we're just going to highlight just him. We want to keep it off the rest of everything else and highlight just him. Get that middle bone if you can. You can get him on the side a little bit. All the way down. And I liked a little bit on that plastic. If anything looks kind of plastic, try to get a little bit on it too to get rid of that kind of plastic look. And you can play with the silver a little bit. You might want a little bit of silver on top of the orange as well on some of these areas. color here. There's our silver. Just to break that up and to kind of give that that cool. That is why I really like doing that. I think that is so much fun. So we're just going to go ahead and finish them up now and if you also did your stand don't forget to do your uh, stand as well. Just do it just the same way that we did the other purple, and we'll be good to go. I wanted to show you, if you didn't want the lines as you're going along the candle stand, you don't have to put them there. But if you want the lines to come out, go with those, and then that's going to make it even more so those stand up. So that's up to you if you want to highlight those or if you don't want to highlight you could probably even do it in the darker black color as well to give it a different feel or color. So however you want to do that. I did come in with some of the darker black kind of charcoal color and I just put some here and there just to make it give it that old feel you may want some up on the top or around the rim as well and to glue it on we're going to use our IG 6000 this is a type of glue we want to use if we're going to do glass to glass. It is a real heavy duty glue. If you can't find them, we do have them available on our website just in case you need them. And I'm just going to put them on the top of there. And I'm going to stand my bottle straight up and down on that and let it glue that way. You want to make sure that it's nowhere where anybody can bump it or anything like that. Decide if you want the point in front or how you need that. And just kind of look at it. Make sure it's centered before you let it dry all the way. And once it's dry all the way, we're just going to varnish it with like a Krylon that you can find at Walmart. Maybe... Um, a mat because we want it kind of spooky. If you want to do satin, then do satin. But I don't really suggest a gloss on this because you want it kind of old looking. You don't want it real shiny and sparkly. So we're going to let that go ahead and dry. And you could even put a bow below it. Um, but the bottles, you're trying to kind of make them spooky. So maybe some spider webs and a spider. Just however you want to do that. But just have fun with it. Don't forget we want to also put E6000 on our little um, crossbones do that we want to put on the top as well so people know that it is poisonous. And make sure that you have him the direction you want to go. So if you wanted this guy towards the front, your little crossbones would come towards the front as well. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you had a good time with the project. Give us a thumbs up on YouTube and subscribe so we can continue to bring you all these fun videos. Have a safe Halloween. Oh, my God.